Hello, very nice to be back with you. Happy Thursday if you're watching this live. We're going to have a deep dive into gut health today, one of my favourite subjects, as you know, with a very special guest from one of my favourite brands, Bimuno. I know lots of you enjoy this, talking about prebiotics. So we're going to talk about prebiotics, what they are, probiotics, obviously, postbiotics, possibly, but with a real focus on stepping into this new season. You know, as the seasons change, it gets a bit chillier. This is a really good time to step up our thoughts about our immune system, how we can better protect ourselves from all the bugs that are circulating around us at the moment. If you've got kids coming back from school, grandkids, other people, kids going off to uni, you know, we suddenly become exposed to a whole different environment and that means a whole different connection of lovely bugs and not so lovely bugs perhaps that we're coming into contact with. So how do we best protect ourselves? You know, we talk a lot about gut health here. We've got some key pillars at Lizard Wellbeing, hormones being one and gut health obviously being another. So I'm very delighted that we've got an absolute expert, Rasheen Pichon, and you may have seen her on the Bimuno Instagram. She's a qualified, brilliant nutritionist and she's gonna be answering lots of questions. So I will keep an eye on the comments if you have any for me. First of all, I'm going to see if I can get Amy from my team to join. So uh, actually, I'm going to get Rachel to join. Sorry, I've just seen her pop up here. So basically, Rachel will be a moderator. So if you've got any questions to do with Liz, our well-being, if you have any comments about what we're doing on the website, any of the Liz Loves discount codes, of course, there is a really good one for Bimuno. So wouldn't be here without one of those for you. And things like podcasts, newsletters, articles, features, then she's here so that she can hop on and answer specific questions. But let's see now whether we can connect with Bimuno and Roisin, I see. Thank you from Australia. Where else is everyone watching from? Lovely to just reach everybody far and wide. What time is it with you in Australia? It's just great to be global. That's one of the great things, isn't it, about social media and these platforms is that I can kind of just click live and here we are. Okay, Roisin, I've got a very nice view of your table. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> How are you? I'm brilliant. How are you? Yeah, very, very well, thanks. So where in the world are you? Uh, I'm in West, West Sussex. I'm in Horsham. Oh, very nice. Yeah, I know that part of the world well. Yeah, my brother was in school there. Yeah, yeah it's beautiful. lovely. Very, very leafy down this way, especially yeah. in the sunshine. It's a really lovely place. And, you know, I was in the park not the other day and it was just so autumnal. You talk about it being leafy. You know, the change of seasons, it's really evident, isn't it, with what's going on outside? Yeah, you definitely see it now. You can see the colours in the trees or the, the, the leaves turning orange. So, yeah, it's, I think autumn's definitely on the way now. Yeah, I yeah, love it. So do you want to tell us a little bit about your background before we jump into the gut? Yeah, definitely. So my name is Roisin. Um, so I'm a registered nutritionist and I'm also a scientific communications executive at Trasado, who are the parent company behind the product by Muno. Um, okay. So my background is mainly in sport and exercise and nutrition. So that's kind of my area of expertise. Um, and I've been with by Muno now for just over a year. Right. Brilliant. And, you know, I said today that the focus was really going to be on our immune system. And, you know, I think for me, this is a really important topic right now. I mean, how, how do you take the change of seasons and what do you see going on now with the immune system? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I think, I mean, our, our immune systems are busy working hard all the time, but particularly during this time when we're starting to see that seasonal change, you know, kids are going back to school, um, seasonal bugs are starting to rise up again. And so this is the time now to really be supporting our immune health, especially as we go into kind of the winter and the really cold months to come. Yeah, I, I completely agree. And, you know, in addition to, you know, talking about probiotics, which we will do and prebiotics, I guess there are some kind of nutritional platforms as well. Well, we've got you here as a nutritionist. You know, I, I often talk about vitamin D, for example, for yeah. vitamin D, and we might have been enjoying it during the summer, naturally from the sunshine, but now is the time perhaps to you know, think about a supplement, would you say? Exactly. So, yeah, so obviously uh, we mainly obtain our vitamin D from the sunlight, but obviously as the weather starts to change and we get a lot of cloud cover, we're not getting outside as often. Uh, we want to make sure that we're supplementing with vitamin D to make sure we keep the levels up. And that's one of the great things about having something like Bimuno that is, you know, formulated with vitamin D in it. it means that you can actually get your daily intake whilst supporting your gut health as well. 
That's good. Yeah, I love, love a multitasking product. And actually, you know, people talk about supplements and, you know, some people are pro them, some people are anti them. I am very pro certain supplements, not yeah. necessarily just yeah. kind of, you know, scattergun approach, but, you know, being really quite targeted. And even the British government says everybody should have a vitamin D supplement. So, I mean, you know, if even the slow wheels of government legislation can say yes we stand behind this you know it is it is yeah. fundamental isn't it really it absolutely is yeah i mean it's one of those nutrients that's so hard to get during the autumn and winter so making sure that we're supplementing with the right nutrients when we need them is absolutely key for supporting our well-being yeah. and then other things alongside that like zinc vitamin c you know how do they interact with, with the immune function yeah exactly so so those are some of the key uh, nutrients for immune health. You know, every, when we think of uh, immunity, we do think of vitamin C, don't we? We think about having, you know, orange juice when we're sick and things like that. So making sure we're getting those nutrients alongside zinc, uh, alongside vitamin D as well, is really, really important for making sure that our immune system's in, you know, the best condition possible as we move into this time now when we've got all these seasonal infections on the rise. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, I think some people might be surprised that we're talking about gut and yeah. the immune system. Them, yeah. what's the connection there because yeah. I read that yeah. something like 70 percent of our immune system is actually made in the gut so by looking yeah. after the beneficial gut bacteria you know we're actually supporting our immune system as well as our digestive system and our mental health yeah. and you know, all the other things exactly. like the immune system yeah. maybe we don't really connect with the gut so much Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of people forget that when we talk about the gut, we're also talking about lots of wider areas of health as well. I think people forget about the connection that's there. And you're right in saying that around 70 to 80 percent of our immune cells are actually found in the gut. So if we're supporting the gut, that's also a way of indirectly supporting the immune system as well. Gosh, so those immune cells, are they actually made then by these beneficial bacteria in the gut? I mean, what, how, how does that actually work yeah. on, a, on a biochemical level? So they already exist there, but it's the interaction with the microbes that, that what is actually what helps with their, the immune health. And so they produce bacteria when it ferments uh, fibres. They produce um, metabolites, so they little uh, compounds that are produced from the fermentation of fibres. And these compounds actually interact with the immune cells and help to kind of support our immune defence. That's just extraordinary. Isn't it? I mean, the gut is so clever. It and when is, you think yeah. about it, you know, we've only really been talking about it in recent years. I, I wrote my first book on gut health, The Good Gut Guide, probably, actually I wrote it before the menopause book. So I was probably researching it about 10 years ago. And I think it was published maybe, I don't know, eight, nine years ago. I think it was the first kind of big consumer guide in, in the UK. And, you know, then it seemed so revolutionary. Yeah. You know, I mean, even people kind of shied away. It was like, oh, gut health, gut, you know, I mean, who wants to talk yeah. about the gut? That's just kind of, you know, bowels and digestion, isn't it? And now, exactly, yeah. You know, only those short space of years, when you think about it in terms of, you know, medical advancement and knowledge, we've gone on so quickly. We talk about the gut brain axis and yeah. mental health. And we talk, I was talking actually yesterday only about probiotics on the skin and the gut skin access. And yeah. then you've got the astrabolone when you talk about the gut estrogen connection. Yeah. And, you know, we're here talking about immunity. Presumably there's kind of nothing going on in our bodies that our gut microbes don't affect. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I think in recent years, as you say, the gut microbiome is slowly becoming, you know, more and more well known, especially with healthcare professionals yeah. who are actually realising the importance of it when they're helping their patients. And, you know, you're right, it, it affects so many different parts of the body. And, and over time, we're slowly establishing all of these different connections, you know, between the brain, between immune health and things like that. And so the gut is super important and actually it's kind of at the centre of a lot of areas of our health. Yeah. You talked that just now about the, the gut microbes improving and supporting these immune cells yeah. through the, the insoluble fiber, the indigestible fibers. Does that mean yeah. then that, you know, the fiber that we're eating in our diet is is really crucial? And, you know, yeah. what kind of things would you as nutritionist say that as we step into a new season, we should be focusing on our in our diet? What, what are the kind of the best foods for our yeah. immunity? 
Yeah, so you're right. Fibre is super important. It, it plays so many different roles in different areas of our health. And I think sometimes it's almost the forgotten nutrient as well. But I mean, as we're moving into kind of autumn, winter, you want to think about those hearty root vegetables, things mm. like pumpkins and sweet potatoes and squash, um, even things like lentils as well, which are great. Apples, elderberries, there's lots of lovely fruit and vegetables out there at the moment. And even thinking about the warming spices as well, you know, cinnamon, uh, ginger, turmeric, these are all really, really good great and have little compounds in them that can actually support our health and support the gut and so definitely getting a variety of those foods in there is going to be really crucial throughout this winter winter time yeah yesterday i actually made um a really warming tea because i just i just felt like something a bit kind of fortifying mm. so i um, heated up a little bit of apple juice with water and put in some cinnamon a little bit of turmeric a little bit of ginger and honestly it was so good i mean it was a slightly kind of christmasy taste but it was yeah, and I, I did actually think about you. I did actually think, oh, I'm going to be talking about gut health tomorrow. I'm sure Rasheen will be quite pleased with this because yeah. even tiny amounts, you know, can make a difference, can't mm -hmm. they? I mean, obviously, you're only having a tiny sprinkle of cinnamon and a tiny little bit of turmeric yeah. or whatever in, in a tea. But the gut microbes don't need a lot, do they? They just need diversity. Exactly, yeah. So when we think about uh, supporting the gut through our nutrition, it's more about having variety. So whilst it's great to include, you know, these prebiotic fibres and lots of different types of fibre in the diet as well, it's more about making sure we have a variety. So you're thinking about getting lots of different colours in there as well, you know, purples and oranges and reds. Those are the foods that are really going to support the gut and also really support the immune system as well. Yeah, interesting. You know, I, the, the, the colours of fruits, you, know, you talk about elderberries, they're obviously blackberries, and yeah. you know, pumpkin and squashes and all those sort of bright orangey things. The colour is very often an indication of the nutrient, isn't it? So you yeah. get the anthocyanins in the purple berries, you know, like blueberries and blackberries, black currants, red currants, and then the carotenoids in the pumpkins and squashes and sweet potato. So it's yeah. a real clue, isn't it, that nature's given us? Go, go for all the colourful stuff. It Exactly. Yeah, I mean, uh, you're absolutely right. All of the bright colours can actually be an indicator of some of the nutrients that are present. You've got a spot on there with the anthocyanins in really purple and kind of dark foods. Mm -hmm. And then the, the beta carotenes in your in your squashes and all your bright orange foods and yellow foods. Um, so there's lots of really great nutrients. And, and absolutely that na nature is the way to go and getting lots of plant based foods, lots of really colourful foods is so great for supporting our health. So great. And you can at this time of year as well, I think, make really delicious soups. You know, you oh, yeah. can be, I know Tim Spector, a friend of mine, you know, he's always going on about 30 plants a week. And I'm thinking, you know, that is super easy because if you make a soup, you can easily put 10 different things in just one yeah. bowl of soup and you can whiz it up, can't you? You don't have to have them all yeah. crunchy. You can actually make them smooth because you still get the plant fibers, don't you? Even if it's, even if it's blended. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, adding lots of different uh, fruits and vegetables to, you know, your smoothies or to your soups is great. But also any dishes you're making, if you've got leftover vegetables and you want to include them, you know, you can chop them up and add them in, you know, adding in things like courgettes into a bolognese or mushrooms, things like that. It's really easy to actually add lots of different vegetables and fruits into lots of different foods. Yeah, we were talking here uh, mushrooms with um, Bristol Fungarium not that long ago oh, yeah. and talking about the role of beta glucans in yeah. mushrooms and I think they have a role in the immune system as well. Yeah, absolutely. So they actually do have a bit of a, a prebiotic effect as well. Mm -hmm. So they can support the gut, which can then support the immune health as well. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So again, fibrous and uh, with mushrooms, one of the tips that I do when the sun is shining is put mine on the windowsill because a bit like our skin, the skin of mushrooms will create vitamin D, which I think is quite yeah. magic, really. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, it's so amazing what nature can do. And there's so many options. You know, if you like say, even just what you've described there, that's a really great summer option for actually increasing the amount of vitamin D that you get. Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about um, Bimuno then, because yeah. It's got so many different properties and it's not a probiotic, is it? So yeah. can we just talk about the difference? I, I think, you know, certainly, you know, viewers here will know about, a little bit about pre probiotics probably in the fermented foods. These are the good gut bugs that we find in yogurt and kefir and fermented foods, kombucha, all of that. But Bimuno is different, isn't it? Because it's not actually a probiotic. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So Bimuno often does get confused with a probiotic. And I think it's because prebiotics are kind of less well known. And so prebiotics are kind of like the food source or the fertilizers for the good bacteria that we already have in the gut. Right. So our GOS um, or our Bimuno contains GOS or, or what's called galacto oligosaccharides. We keep it as GOS for short because it's so much easier. But that is a food, a direct feed for bifidobacteria in the gut. So it helps bifidobacteria to thrive and it can support a more healthy gut microbiome. Right. Okay. Now I have got some here. I do travel yeah. with it. I love it. I love the fact that it comes in these little paper sachets and it's super easy. And I'm going to do something which I hope is going to be okay. You're going to tell me if it's not, because I've also got here some lemon balm tea, which I'm sipping. Oh, I'm going to put this in my tea. Now is, I know that with probiotics, you've got to be careful to keep them cool. Ideally. Yeah. Is this going to be destroyed by my hot tea? No, so one of the really unique things about Bimuno is that it's heat stable and it is resistant to the digestive process as well, which means it's highly versatile. You can add it into any food or drink, hot or cold. It's taste free as well. So you're not going to taste it in there as well. Your drink's still going to taste the same. Um, and it means that the effective dose, so that effective goss is going to make it all the way to the gut where it's actually going to be able to work and feed bifidobacteria. Okay, that's really good. So I could add it to tea, to coffee, yep. or, you know, if you wanted to you could just put it into water or juice presumably you could add it into a smoothie you could put it into yogurt yeah exactly you can even put it in things like porridge you can add it into mm -hmm. pretty much anything it's so versatile and like i say because you've got that taste-free component it can go into anything and you're not going to know it's there which is also great for kids as well because kids can be really picky when it comes to different uh, tastes yeah. and things like that they can be so it's so interesting talking about kids so can we give this to kids then yes absolutely so uh, Bimuno is suitable for children aged four years and over. But as you'll know, we have our new uh, Bimuno immunity for kids. Um, and that's actually um, a little bit different from the, the standard immunity product. It has a few key differences, but it means that it is suitable for children aged four years and up. That is fantastic. So why is it different then for children? Are you just using less or using different yeah. things? Yeah, absolutely. So the Bimuno immunity, it contains our standard GOS, but it also has added vitamins in. So it has added vitamin C, D3 and zinc in it. Mm. The difference between uh, the standard immunity product, but then the kids immunity is that it's half the dose. So one time, sometimes with children, we do worry about sensitivity and, you know, maybe having a bit of a reaction. So we usually have advise a half sachet of the standard dose okay. but what that means is when you're traveling it's not great to have a half open sachet of powder that could potentially spill everywhere so what we've done is you've made it the half dose and a much smaller sachet which means you can take it on the go with you um, and then in terms of the vitamins we've gone with the nhs guidelines for the vitamins and minerals that are in bimuno which means they're at the right amount for children and it means we can support the whole family yeah, yeah, really good. And is this something then that you take every day? I mean, how long does it take to work and what's it actually doing? Sorry, lots of questions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so Bimuno is a daily supplement and what our science has shown, because we are really big on the science here, is that yeah. it feeds bifidobacteria in just seven days. In terms of actually seeing the benefits, this obviously is individual and it can take a bit longer, but we do advise mm -hmm. long-term supplementation because that means you're more likely to see the benefits. So taking it once a day, you know, incorporating it into a morning routine, into your morning coffee or tea or your porridge, that's a really great way of getting it in and making sure it actually becomes a habitual thing. Yeah. I think it's that habit isn't it yeah. I, I was um with brella uh, last week actually staying with her and i was really pleased i was looking at her supplements that she had because she's she's big on gut health having had issues you know, that she's talked about and she had her her bimuno there and then yeah. i looked and you know, I, I put a tea bag or something in the bin and you know sure enough there was the empty wrapper and i thought good you're doing it you know yeah. you, that's exactly what we like to do <laughs> going in i think you know especially when your children are older and they're away from home i've just had kit you know go back to uni and i sent him off with a whole pile of stuff yeah you, you know you have to really hope that they're going to keep themselves well and pick up good habits and just it becomes yeah. a routine for me you know putting a sachet in my coffee or my tea it's just routine i don't even think about it you know and it's, yeah, it's getting exactly. that, habit, it? that healthy yeah. habit exactly yeah yeah, and I think as well, you, you raise a good issue there about, you know, kids going off to university. It's such a big stage in life. And the it's not just, you know, like starting school, which can be very stressful in itself. You're also mm -hmm. moving away from home for the first time. You know, you're learning to be independent and actually creating the right habits can help you stay really well during that time when you've got, you know, a lot of academic mm -hmm. pressure and maybe the, the sort of fear of being away from home. So absolutely having something like Bimino that's really easy to incorporate into your routine yeah. is absolutely great. Absolutely. I mean, I was 
kit, um, texting Kit yesterday. My, my, he's just gone up for a second year and, uh, you know, saying, how's it going? And, you know, have you got everything you need? And of course, you know, it's been fresh as week. So there's been a lot of partying. And I, you know, I yeah. actually did say, you know, don't forget your supplements, you know, don't get so yeah. carried away with all that good stuff going on uh, that you think you're invincible. Because sometimes I've noticed in the past, I haven't been that diligent, you know, because you, mm-hmm. when you start taking things and you feel really well, it almost makes you a bit complacent because you think, yeah, yeah I've got this. my body's doing really well. I feel really great. And then I stop or I ease back a bit and then I don't feel so great. And I think, oh, no, you know, what's going on? Oh, I know. It's because I'm not doing yeah. what I was doing before. You, When you start to feel well, it's such a great thing because you can forget about health issues and your body exactly. is being supported and it's, and it's functioning well as it should. But I think we mustn't forget, you know, particularly with the microbiome, it changes on a daily basis, isn't it? It's not something yeah. that you can just suddenly fertilize with this good stuff and then go away for a few weeks and leave it. it you know, it yeah. does. It's like a garden, I guess, growing weeds. You need to constantly be there on it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So consistency is really key. And that I think consistency is so important in so many areas of our life. And we have to remember as well with the gut microbiome, while supplements are great and having good nutrition is also great as well. Things like exercise and how much stress we have and how much sleep we get as well is super important. Because as you say, the gut can change on a daily basis. And so if we're not sleeping well for a few days, that can actually have a negative effect on our gut. And so we want to make sure that we've got a regular bedtime, we're getting activity in, and we're also getting a good diet and getting in our our supplements as well whenever we need them so like you say by muno adding it in daily making it a habit that's really going to support the gut health it's super easy sleep actually i'm glad that you've mentioned that word because that is so key and just as we rest and our our body is physically resting that rest time when we're not digesting anything that's the time when our gut bacteria they're doing all their housekeeping aren't they they're working for us while we're asleep Exactly, yeah, it's a non-stop job for them, a bit like our immune system as well, it, that, it never stops. Whilst we're resting, lots of different activities in our body, like the gut, it can all get to work and start doing some of these activities that they can't do when we're digesting food. So making sure you're getting in, you know, your good eight hours of sleep is going to be really helpful for the gut. Yeah, it's, it's hard. I know it's, I know it's not easy. I mean, one of the yeah. things that I've started to do, actually, is to make my bedtime earlier, you know, yeah. just to really try and get to bed even if it's just half an hour earlier, maybe an hour earlier. And actually, I know that the, the clocks are, are going back in a few weeks' time, and I actually find that easier. It's harder when it's light in the evening. Yeah, but absolutely. But the day's yeah. drawing in, and it's, you know, it's dark by, well, it gets dark, you know, kind of six o'clock, doesn't it? You kind yeah. of feel that by about nine o'clock that you've had a load of darkness, and it's neat, it's time to go to bed. So hopefully, it's, yeah. hopefully we'll get a bit more sleep. Yeah. A little bit more sleep. Exactly. Sleep. Absolutely. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Sleep is so, so important. And I think even, you know, like you say about going to bed, even even just half an hour earlier sometimes having just half an hour to wind down before bed's great as well so you know don't have your screen time you know maybe have like a nice warming drink or something uh, maybe do some meditation or a bit of gentle stretching or something just to help you really wind down and relax that means you can get into bed and hopefully nod off straight away and have a really restful night's sleep yeah definitely we're talking about a warming drink at night presumably you could put them you know into your warming drink does it matter what time of day you take it should we be having it in the morning no, not necessarily. I mean, it all depends on the person, you know, whatever works best for you. That's what's great about Bibi, you know, it's going to work at any time of the day. But as I said before, it's more about having the habit of taking it. And normally we say morning time because um, mornings are just the time when you have a routine. But if you've got an evening routine, it can be great at that time of the day as well. So whatever kind of works for each individual, you know, go with what's best for you is basically the advice. Yeah. Um- and when you say that it takes seven days or so to get, you know, fully into the system and to start having an effect, what kind of effect does do you get reported back to you? I mean, I know you can't make any specific claims about it, but what are the sorts of things or is it something that's just invisibly going on inside and we have to trust yeah. the science that it's working? So- it really it really does depend on the person because each response is unique so sometimes what we see within that first week or after a couple of days is people report a bit of mild rumbling or gurgling in the tummy and they think oh is this something good is this something bad but actually that's usually a sign of the goths actually starting to take action on the microbes and so usually it's a good thing and it will settle down after a few days um some people with who are more prone to kind of symptoms in their gut you know uncomfortable tummies um they might want to start on a half sachet just to start kind of 
would see how it goes and then um, you know work their way up to the full daily dose if it's well tolerated um, but generally yeah just some mild gurgling and rumbling is kind of what we usually experience um, and then after that it kind of improves but obviously each each response is unique yeah 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 and you talk about goss and i can see we've got lots of latecomers joining hi guys <laughs> late. the galacto oligosaccharides have i said that right that's okay. right yep <laughs> I'm proud of that one um what exactly are they where do they come from and what are they doing yeah, so they're basically long chain carbohydrates, so they're indigestible fibres. And in the case of Algos, so you can obtain um, oligosaccharides in food in different formats. So you've got things like inulin and, and stuff like that. But Algos is very unique in that it can't actually be obtained from food. So we have a process where we, you know, we take an enzyme and we react it with, um, with different things as well. And, and as a result of that, we get our GOS, which can then act on the gut microbiome. So ours is very unique. So it's um, derived from lactose in cow's milk, um, but it can't actually be obtained from food. So you can get your prebiotics in your food. And we obviously advise, you know, a food first approach. Yeah. But this is also a really nice way of also getting in those prebiotics that can support the gut as well. OK, so lactose intolerance shouldn't have it or, should, or, or OK with it? No. So um, the actual amount of uh, lactose that's in one sachet of bimuno is less than 0.6 of a gram. So it's a really, really small amount. And uh, EFSA actually recommend having less than 13 grams of lactose a day if you're lactose intolerant. Oh. So you can see that it's well below, what well below the, the tolerated level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's really good to know. And, you know, I know a lot of supplements do contain things like inulin because they're yeah. there as, as this prebiotic, aren't they, to feed yeah. the good gut bug. But this is kind of one step up from that. Yeah, so obviously the different prebiotics will all will all help. But mm. I think one one thing that's unique with Bimuno is that it, we know that a really small dose actually works. Yeah. So you've got that really small sachet which can go into a tea or a coffee. You mix yeah. it in, you have no idea that it's there, and you know that that's going to work. So it takes a little bit less thought, especially because it's really easy to advise having a healthy diet and getting your prebiotics mm. in. But actually, putting it into practice is a little bit harder. You know, we're all busy, we're working, we've got children to take care of. Yeah. It's so much harder. And so having something like a supplement that you know is going to work is really, really great. Mm -hmm. And lastly, I know that is the children's supplement coming on the website tomorrow? It is, yeah. It'll be available great. tomorrow, yeah. Fantastic. And, and you've given us an amazing discount, which I will talk about in just a second. Um, yeah, I mean, really incredible because I know it's an absolute firm favourite. I've seen so many comments of people saying, oh, my gosh, this is the one that I take. And it's genuinely the yeah. one that, that I have and give to my family and I have it in my bag and I travel with it and, you know, yeah. just wouldn't be without it. And it's really good now, I think, as we step into the winter, yeah. thinking about our immune system, thinking what we can do, these simple, simple things that will make a big difference. Yeah. So absolutely you. yeah and we, we are so pleased to see that it's been well received and people are loving it and using it that's what we want so it's really great to hear that well it's such a great formula because you've got the gospel as you say you know you've got your nutrients in there as well you know you've yeah, got exactly. vitamin d which is so important you've got your vitamin c you've got your zinc you know these are all fundamentally important for the immune system and it's just a simple one-stop shop isn't it but exactly yeah yeah exactly we want to make sure that we're supporting the gut but we're also supporting the immune system as well which is why we brought out the immunity range so that we can support the whole family you know adults and children as well brilliant rasheen it's lovely to chat to you thank you so much yeah, thank you so much yeah Enjoy it's lovely the rest meeting. Of your day in horsham get out amongst those lovely colorful leaves yeah we'll definitely <laughs> do that yeah get a bit of time away from the screen as well get yeah, some yeah, get definitely. some much needed eye rest yeah <laughs> thank you very much to see you thanks and you. i know you Click the little um, white cross on the top right hand box. Lovely. Take care, Liz. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Fascinating stuff. Well, if you're interested, I did say that there was the most incredible saving, and there is. I think it's possibly one of our best ever. You can save 29%, okay, so that's nearly a third, <laughs> on your first three month supply. Okay, so go for it, guys, because you're going to want, you're going to need three months, okay? Take us right the way up till Christmas. Um, and then 20% on recurring orders. So super generous. Uh, thank you very much. There is a special code, special link. So you go to bimuno.com. I'll make sure I pop this in the caption, by the way. Bimuno.com forward slash Liz Loves. Okay. And that brings up the special page. Um, and that is where you will find it. Okay. So it's a Liz Loves, um, but you just need to do bimuno.com forward slash Liz Loves because 
they haven't made it available to everybody. Oh, no, 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 not everybody. But we have got it, which is great. Something else that we have got, and I absolutely loved my chat yesterday with Sharon from MV Skincare. Oh, my gosh. Wasn't she just so brilliant? I've got it here, MV Skin Therapy. This was the Rose Petal Extract. So this, Rose Petal Plus, or the Rose Plus rather, has unbelievably 460 doses in it. So if you're using that once a day, that's like over a year. And she was explaining how many tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, God, we couldn't do the maths, rose petals are in here. It's absolutely sensational because you just need two drops. My skin is actually looking slightly shiny because I put some on just before my live because I'm just absolutely healthily addicted to it. I don't want to use too much. And the smell is incredible. I mean, she is over here. Oh, amazing. I'm going to put some through my hair, just a little fragrance. Um, she's over here at the moment doing her A-list clientele. And it was really amazing to read the comments, actually, to see all the people that have been spotted talking about hers. Without being paid for, they just love it. And um, people like Kate Hudson, she was up there recently. You've got Brooke Shields. There was, was it Maggie Jingle and Emma Watson. I mean, so many. Anyway, I'm hoping very much that she will be able to see a mere mortal like me at some point and talk some more about skincare. So that was the Rose Plus Booster. And she has, of course, given us 15% off at myskintherapy.co.uk. That's just about it for today. Just to say, those of you who follow me on my Instagram may have seen that I posted a little sneaky announcement update, which is coming tomorrow. I'm not allowed to talk about it now. Oh my gosh, it's so frustrating. But everybody on Instagram, you will be the first to hear about it tomorrow. Sign up to the newsletter. If you are not already signed up to the Liz Our Wellbeing newsletter, please, please sign up because the first announcement will come to our newsletter community and that will go out at four o'clock tomorrow afternoon. So if you're not on the list, you're not going to get the email. So sign up. It's free. We don't spam you. It's just full of lovely recipes and nice links to podcasts and things. If you don't like it, you can unsubscribe. But make sure that you're on it tomorrow. And then I will also be on my Instagram, Liz Me, tomorrow later in the day to talk about something super exciting. But until then, I will be back with you next week. I'm actually going to be back with you from a very special location next week, which again, I'm really, really excited to be able to talk to you about. And it's, I think, going to become one of my favourite places ever. So I can't wait to share it with you. Anyway, I won't be able to talk too much about it now. You're just going to have to wait. Sorry about that. Anyway, lots and lots of good stuff. So I'm going to say bye-bye for now. Tomorrow, of course, there is a brand new episode of the Lizard Wellbeing podcast. And it's all about sex. Yeah. It's a really good one too. Okay, so much good stuff happening. Anyway, sending you lots and lots of love on that note and a big heart. And I look forward to seeing you back here again very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.